Award races, the playoff picture, an epic game against the Dallas Mavericks, and a look at upcoming free agents for this offseason. All that and more for you guys right now. So welcome back everybody to episode 17 of the Louisville Badgers. We got quite a few really cool things that we're going to go over today, but the highlight of this episode is going to be our game against Luka Doncic, Chris Stapps Porzingis, and the Dallas Mavericks. Now, over the next couple of episodes, we're going to be spending time talking about, you know, the free agents that are going to be coming up this year, you know, the draft and who we've got our eye on for this 2020 draft class. And I want to take a look at some of the detailed team stats for this season, uh, because that's something that we haven't really dug into quite yet. Now, before we hop in to the Mavericks game, though, there's a couple things that I want to take a look at first. Okay. Now we know, of course, that this upcoming draft is going to be extremely important for us. It's going to be a a really, really big building block for us. It's already looking like we're going to have a pretty high draft pick. That's what we're hoping for anyway. Fingers crossed. However, just as important as the draft is going to be this year's upcoming free agents. So let's take a quick look at this now right off the bat. uh, It's going to be probably a little confusing here and things might not look as they seem because you're going to see guys like Doncic. Tatum, uh, you know, a few of these rookies and guys that are younger uh, that are going to look like they're free agents, but they're really restricted free agents that have these team options. uh, And you can be pretty certain that their teams are going to exercise those options. Now, one guy who doesn't, however, is Ben Simmons. He does not have a team option for 2020. Uh, I thought he did. I'm not sure. But, you know, I guess we're far enough into it now where he does not. He was drafted in 2016. So I guess that makes sense. However, it's really difficult to see Ben Simmons fitting on this team, despite the fact that he is the best free agent here. Um, It's really tough to see him fitting here. Uh, You guys let me know what you think, uh, but I I just don't know whether or not he would fit. I mean, we could put him at small forward, I guess, uh, or we could even put him at power forward and put Jaron Jackson at the center position. Uh, But you guys would have to let me know what you think about that. However, I want to go down the list and start to look at guys who might fit better. Now, one of the guys right off the bat, Tatum would fit awesome. Now, he's got a team option for this year. However, he's a guy that we're going to store away in our memory banks because next offseason, you know, he'll be an unrestricted free agent. And he is a guy who, I'll tell you what, man, I've had visions of this team with a guy like him on it. And I I think that the uh, the results would be uh, amazing, to say the least. Uh, But going down the list of guys who are unrestricted, you got Siakam. He does not have any options, right? So he's unrestricted. So Siakam would definitely be an interesting fit because there is definitely, uh, you know, part of me who who really would love to see a guy like Siakam at the four and Jaron Jackson at the five. I think that would be a really, really lethal combo down in the post. Aiton, of course, has his team options. Mitchell, the same thing. John Collins, the same thing. Now, Anthony Davis has a player option that he could exercise in Boston, uh, but there is a very solid chance that he might not do that. It's all going to depend on how the Celtics do, but uh, as it stands right now, he's out for the next two to four weeks with a broken left ankle, but that's another narrative that we're going to have to keep an eye on and see how that plays itself out. Kyle Kuzma, another guy who has a team option because he's still on his rookie deal. Jaron Jackson, he obviously is not going anywhere. We've got we've got several more years of him. De'Aaron Fox, another guy who's got a team option. He wouldn't fit with us anyway. Jared Allen would be really cool, but he's another one of those guys that has the team option. Now, here is an unrestricted guy who I think a lot of you would be extremely interested in. Jamal Murray... Even if we were to bring in a guy like Anthony Edwards, Jamal Murray would still fit on this team for the simple fact that he's interchangeable from the one and the two. Uh, I would probably play him more at the two, if we're being honest. And he could be, number one, he could be a great mentor for Anthony Edwards right off the bat, uh, even though he's very young himself. But this is a guy that we could bring in And we could put him in that starting role right away while we're grooming Anthony Edwards. And the fact that he can play the one and the two means that we can have three really, really good interchangeable guards if we were to bring in Jamal Murray and if we were to draft a guy like Anthony Edwards if we're able to get him. Buddy Heald, another interesting two-guard option who can also play the small forward. He is very, very, very good from the outside. Uh, He's not a guy that I'm, you know, 
opposed to to looking at in this offseason. He's another guy who's unrestricted, and he's having himself a really, really good season between the two teams. He's averaging over 17 points. He's not doing a whole, whole lot in the terms of rebounding and assisting, but he's a scorer, man. That's what he does. Hassan Whiteside, this is another guy that would be really interesting to me if he wasn't so expensive and old. Uh, you know what I mean? He, he's, he's not, I'm not saying he's too, too old, but he's also going to be really expensive. He's going to be expecting a lot of money. Now, he would really, really solve a lot of our rebounding problems, not only on the defensive glass, but also on the offensive boards as well. Uh, he would he would solve a lot of that for us. Um, I just don't think I want to tie up a lot of money in a guy like Whiteside when we could bring in, you know, a couple of the other guys that are on this list who could really help us, you know, on rebounding on both sides of the ball. Of course, we can skip right past Marvin Bagley as much as I'd love to have him. He's got two more years of team option. Brandon Ingram is unrestricted. However, he's another guy who I'm not 100% sure how he would fit on this team. I mean, of course, we need a good small forward, but is he the type of guy that we look at and say, he could be the small forward of the future. Uh, maybe so. Maybe so. He's still only 22 years old. He's still got amazing potential, uh, and he, he, you know, he could still really break out, uh, you know, of that mold that he's been in and that 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 kind of complacency that he's been in there in LA, and really start to blossom into the superstar that a lot of people thought he would become. So as usual, you know, I need your 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 feedback. You guys' feedback on a lot of this stuff. Uh, you know, Sabonis is here. He'd, he'd be a really good fit for the simple fact that he can rebound his behind off. He's unrestricted. Kyle Lowry is unrestricted. Uh, Lowry is a guy who I'm just simply not interested in at all. Markinen, he does have another team option left. So, uh, you know, despite the fact that I would be very interested in him, I don't think we'll be able to get him. Harrell is a guy who is very interesting to me uh, because he plays such great defense. And despite the fact that he's kind of an undersized center, uh, like I said before, we can play Jaron Jackson at the five and then kind of throw him at the four and, you know, they could be interchangeable. So that would give us a lot of versatility, a lot of flexibility and, uh, you know, kind of the ability to play, you know, positionless basketball to an extent. Um, and I think Montrez would really fit right into that mold right away. So he's also unrestricted. Jalen Brown is unrestricted, uh, you know, and Jalen Brown's a guy who I could see being a small forward or, you know, two guard or, or a three wing of the future for us. So that's another option that I would need you guys' feedback on. Of course, Trey Young won't be available. Levert, uh, you know, I'm up and down on Levert. You guys have to tell me how you guys feel about him. I really, really love his ability to finish at the basket. I really love, you know, uh, his intensity and the fact that he's, you know, like a spark plug on the floor. What I want to do is I want to go to the top of the list here, though, and I want to I want to sort this by the best rebounders here. Now, obviously, the best guy on the list is going to be Whiteside. Uh, he's, you know, A1 as far as rebounding go. He probably averages something ridiculous for his career. John Collins, I would absolutely love, but uh, I'm 99.9% .9 sure the Hawks will be exercising the team option on him. Hernan Gomez is unrestricted, and I think he could be a good fit, but he's another one of those guys who defends and rebounds and doesn't do a whole lot more. Uh, but with the fact that we're going to have other guys on the team that can really score the ball, you know, he's young and he could be a good fit. Sabonis, so I feel like, would be a fantastic option. We'll have to check and see how much he's going to be expecting. Uh, but this is a guy who I am extremely, extremely interested in. I, I'd have to say, out of the guys who can rebound the best, I'd say he's probably the front runner in my eyes right now for a guy that we could bring in if he's not really going to be expecting, you know, tons and tons of money. Uh, he's a guy who I would absolutely be looking into bringing into this team. Pirtle could be a really cool option. He's seven foot. You know, he's got plenty of size. You know, he can score inside. Bam still has another team option. Otherwise, I would really, really love to look at him and see what he would be expecting money-wise. And as I'm looking through these guys, we're not really just looking for a guy who can rebound the ball really well. We also want a guy who can be, you know, uh, you know, our four or five of the future. You know what I mean? And that's why I feel like Sabonis fits that so well because he's only 22 years old and he's just got so much potential and I feel like he would fit this team like a glove so yeah anyway those are the upcoming free agents you guys let me know what you think about the guys that we took a look at as always I make no decisions without you guys being in on it first because the Louisville Badgers are a team of the viewers so continue on with the awesome feedback you guys know I need it you know I love it so now it is game time. And as you can see, uh, since the last time we checked, the Mavericks are now 26 and 45. We are still sitting at 19 and 53. And taking a look at the matchup here, I've already said it a few times, we match up very well against them. So they line up like this. 
Jalen Brunson is starting at point guard. They've got Rodney Hood, their new addition, starting at shooting guard. Luka at small forward, but he'll be running a lot of the point, I'm sure. Chris Stapps at power forward. And Deontay Davis at center. And then our lineup for today, I'm actually going to change up a little bit from what you guys saw on the screen a second ago. I want to take Karooch out of the lineup. I want to replace him with Keldon Johnson. And then I want to have Bryn Forbes starting at shooting guard for today. Now, I thought I had it set up like that to begin with. Uh, I guess I did not. But as far as the matchups go, you guys already know. I want Jaron Jackson to follow Chris Stapps Porzingis around like he's his shadow, okay? So I think that is it, and we are ready for tip-off. The crowd is assembled at the American Airlines Center looking for a Mavericks win here in downtown Dallas. This is Kevin Harlan. We've got Chris Weber and Greg Anthony with us, and from the sideline, we'll be hearing from David Aldridge. So here we are at tip-off, and for the first time, I'm going to be narrating this live right off the bat. That's right. So this is not an intro this time. We are live here at Tip Off with me commentating the game right off the bat. So you see the Mavericks win the tip. And uh, sorry, so this intro isn't going to be too great because i got to concentrate here on Porzingis trying to put the moves on Jaron Jackson. Great defense there. Let's go. All right, got to dictate the pace of this game. We have to be in control here. Uh, that's going to be the big thing. Uh, we, we really match up well with this team. And nice shot there by Jaron Jackson along too. Beautiful, beautiful shot, heavily contested. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, I mean, we have to um, we have to dictate the tempo here because we, we match up well against them. They've got two very, oh, awful alley-oop there. Let's push the tempo. Push it. All right. I wanted to get Zubats cutting there, but a little late. And look at that. Nice finish right there. But yeah, so anyway, back to like I was saying. Um, we are we match up pretty well against this team. They have two stars. We have two stars. But outside of the two stars that they have, which, you know, theirs are a little more established at this point. Uh, but outside of that, neither team really has much to speak of. So this is definitely a winnable game for us. Getting late in the shot clock there. And oh, Deontay Davis, I don't know how he hit that one. But yeah, so like I was saying, I mean, I, I really I really don't see a scenario where we get blown out here. And I could absolutely see a scenario where we're the ones blowing them out or at least winning the game. Uh, you know, as long as we play smart, rebound well, hit our shots. I mean, I know that that's what you always have to do. And we just got blocked almost into the third row. Forbes. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Forbes. What a shot. All right, so we just have to be the ones that, you know, stay in control of this game, okay? We, we can't let it be like the Lakers uh, and the Knicks game where, you know, they dictated everything about it. And another, another failed alley-oop attempt. Look at that. All right, we got Keldon Johnson in here. He's been doing really, really well as of late. Really want to get him. And look at that. Jaron Jackson. Uh, it's too easy. It's too easy. But Keldon Johnson's been doing fantastic, though. I want to get him the ball more. We got Kostas Antetokounmpo out here, and look at the steal by Wagner. Let's push it up. Myers Leonard. Bang, baby. Oh, oh, get out of here. Kostas, Kostas, whatever your name is, bro. You just got bodied. All right. Let's play some good D now to follow up that really nice Myers Leonard dunk, and Hardaway was open, but he missed it. Okay, he bricked it. All right, let's go. Let's let's like I said, we we are best in transition. I've said it a million times. Morris bricks it, but Wagner is there for the offensive board, and that is a that is a welcome sight. Dwight Powell, get out of here, boy! All right, two point lead here early in the second. Not a lot of scoring in the first quarter there. Wagner, he's open, and he is not going to miss that. Boom, baby, three points. All right, so they cut the lead down to one again. This has been a really close game, really good game so far. Both teams showing, you know, just how evenly matched we are. Come on, Ja. That's a long two, but it is a green light all day. Perfect release there. He's two for five. Ja cutting. That's, man, he has been really, really efficient getting inside there so far in this game. I am loving it. That is, that is something that I love to see him doing, attacking and cutting like that. Being under the basket, you know, being in position. That is that is where we need him to be. And Rodney Hood. Oh, and he missed it. 
What just happened? How did that get tipped in? All right, so one point lead is back to a one point lead for us. We've got Ja. Look at this. Get worked, baby. Get worked, Jalen Brunson. All right, they got the fast break here. Let's see if we can play good defense. Jackson pulling up and hitting. All right. Could be worse. Could be worse. We're still up one. We got to try to pull away here at some point, though. And Ja, he says, let's get it started right now, baby. He's on fire already. All right. We're playing a good game, but we just can't pull away from them as of right now. They're scoring and just answering every time we... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Look at that layup. John Morant said, the Mavericks are not beating us on my watch. This man is on fire right now. Beautiful dime. What a beautiful dime, man. He is scoring, assisting, and, you know, he is just, man, I'm so proud of him. So proud of the way he's developing so far in his first season as a rookie. All right, let's get some good D here. No, nah, I got held up by a guy who wasn't even trying to screen me, but they bricked it. All right, good. So they are missing some of their shots here, which is very good news for us. Bradley for three. Bang. Six-point lead, 30 seconds to go. Jaron Jackson, let's go, baby. What a beautiful cut to the basket in the transition. So we're back up by one here early in the third. All right, so defense has been a pain point here, man. Like, every time we score, they just answer, and that's not going to change here with Luka taking it hard to the rack. He has been pretty tough to stop, man. All of the, uh, you know, all of the rumors are true about him. He, he is explosive. Monty, what? Look at that! Look at that dime! What a pass! Just attacking the bucket and then finding the open man and Bryn Forbes, just in a perfect position there. Had his man beat. All right, so Luca bringing it up. We have got to to find an answer for him. We've been doing a good job on Porzingis so far, but it's Luca who has been hurting us. And look, they just keep trying these alley oops, and they are not working. Boys, stop it. You, you cannot throw the alley on us. We've proven that to you three times at this point. It's time to stop trying it. Keldon Johnson, get in there, draws the foul. I like it. All right, Monty Morris in the game now. Jalen Brunson is somehow on fire. All right, I like this little play here where he sets this little slip screen. And look at that. That's... Oh! Bryn Forbes! Bryn Forbes going up for the two-handed slam. Okay, I see you, Bryn. I see you, Bryn. I think that might be the first time I've actually dunked with Bryn Forbes in this game. All right, so we got po both point guards uh, on fire here. Both dropping dimes like madmen. Monty Morris has 10 assists right now to go along with two rebounds, but he doesn't have any points yet. But I'm okay with that. He's facilitating. And Luka, beautiful defense there. Perfect contest. Let's see what we can do here in transition. Wagner with a long two, and look at that. Just a just a smooth release, and we are up by eight points now. All right, let's try to make it a double-digit lead, and that's going to happen. Look at that. Look at that. Jaron Jackson, he is always in the right place at the right time, and that's why he is our star. And they're going to take a timeout here, try to talk over, you know, exactly why they went down by 10 points in seemingly the blink of an eye. All right, push the pace. That's when we're at our best. Sound like a broken record here, but we do good things when we are pushing it. And Danny Green in the corner. He's a corner specialist and a catch-and-shoot specialist. He's not missing those. All right, they cut the lead to six now, but we got the ball. We're comfortable still. We're okay. Ja, ja Morant, don't do it to him. <laughs> Don't do it to him, Ja. 18 points, 10 of them coming in the paint. All right, six-point game still here early in the fourth. Let's get something going here. Let's try to pull away from these guys. Keldon Johnson, where you at, son? Oh, he's got a wide-open lane, and oh, my God. Another two-handed jam with a wide-open lane to the bucket. 
I'm loving this right now, man. Keldon Johnson, 10 points, 2 assists. All right. Time to play the defense now. Luka's got the ball. Deontay Davis has been doing some work to us, and that was a nice little cut there and a nice shot by Luka. Cut the lead back to 6 again. All right, so every time we think we're going to go ahead and pull away, they, uh, they answer right back and don't let us get any further than about a six-point lead. And look at this, mouse in the house. Jalen Brunson, you are not stopping Jaron Jackson. All right, push it up. It's out, out running here. Look at this, Jaron Jackson. Bang, baby. Bang, that was a big, big bucket there. Huge bucket, nine-point lead. We just got to stop Luka and Porzingis for that matter, but I'm confident that Jaron Jackson has him, and he does. And look at the block by Zubats and... Oh, where's Jaron? Uh, oh, I saw that coming. Jaron Jackson was a little out of position there. And uh, Porzingis, his eyes lit up. As soon as he saw that Zubats was on him instead of Jaron Jackson. Look at this. Come on, Ja. I wanted to dunk there, but I'll take those two points. All right, we're up by five. They've cut the lead to five here. Let's oh. Oh. Good little move there by Ja, man. He is really having himself a game 22 points seven assists i'm loving it man seven point lead here we're not pulling away enough to be totally comfortable but look at that oh my god he had luca open and he decided to take the shot anyway and clanked it all right let's get into our half court set here let's try to get something going here no one's moving what's going on all right ja there, look at that. Bang. Again, baby. He's just getting wide open lanes, and we're back to a nine-point lead. All right, 4.02 to go. We've got the ball here. As long as we just, we don't got to do anything crazy. We just have to score. Doesn't have to be a three-pointer. Doesn't have to be anything in, in, incredible. We just got to make sure we score and eat up some clock. Keldon Johnson. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? What a shot. Oh, my. That was... Probably one of the most clutch shots of the game in Deontay Davis. Caught us sleeping. Okay. All right, I see how it's going to be. All right, back to a six-point game. This has been like the narrative here. Every time we try to pull away, they cut the lead back to six. All right, some weird ball movement here. Let's uh, let's get the ball to Jaron Jackson. Uh, Zubats, thank you. Thank you with the offensive rebound and the putback. All right, they've cut the lead to two here with under a minute to go, and they've got the ball right now. No way he makes that. Oh, my God, the tip in. All right, their crowd is hype. They have tied the game up with less than a minute to go. That tip in really hurt us. We've got to score here. No ifs, ands, or buts. We don't need a three. We just have to score. Oh, my God, he almost lost it twice. All right, Danny Green. We need a pick here. Please. Oh! Oh, my goodness. What a shot. What a shot. Oh, my God. Danny Green coming through in the clutch. And the Mavericks are going to take a timeout. What a clutch shot by Mr. Danny Green. All right, taking it out of bounds here. They've got less than 30 seconds to go. They, they need a three probably here, I would think. I mean... Because then we're just going to run the clock out. Turns around for the two. And oh, Jaws got it. Jaws got the ball and they're going to foul him. Okay. All right, big man. All we need is one of these here, man. All we need is one. I would love two. But one makes it a two possession game. Oh, no. That seemed like it was a pretty good release too. Please don't miss both. Okay. All right, good. Good. So now it's two possessions now. All right, so they can't just come up and bang a three and tie the game up. So things are looking good. They're going to have to score and foul very quickly here. Porzingis with the ball. Great defense, and he got the ball back. Oh, what a steal. What a steal, and Danny Green, they couldn't get the foul. Look at that. 4.5 left. I, I think it's safe to say that's going to seal it. Oh, what a nail biter. What a nail biter. He's going to pull it. Are you kidding me? How did he just hit that shot? Well, anyway, it's just a 
all it does is make it look better in the box score. But what a shot by Luka Doncic from the from the damn logo. But anyway, man, what a game against the Dallas Mavericks. It was a close one, as you guys can see. End of regulation. Man, I got really hyped there at the end. I got really nervous. 117 to 114 is your final score. And I got to say, man, they really kept it so close all game. You, you got to give them a lot of credit for the way that they played. They battled and battled and battled. And as soon as it seemed like we were going to take any kind of a comfortable lead, they just stepped in the way and answered every single time down the floor. But we were too much for them tonight. So here's one last look at how we did against the Dallas Mavericks. It was a really, really good game all the way around. We beat them 117-114. to 114. Jaron Jackson put up 29 with 9 boards, no assists. Uh, he didn't really do much else, but he didn't turn the ball over either, and he shot well from the field. Ja with 25, 3 rebounds, 8 assists, and a steal. Only 2 turnovers, which is awesome for the guy who's handling the ball most of the time. Wagner also had a great game, and so did Keldon Johnson. On the Mavericks side, it was Doncic and Porzingis as usual, but uh, one guy that stepped up here, Deontay Davis, he had uh, 20, 13, and 5 with two steals, so not a bad game at all for him. Now next up, I want to simulate up to this April 15th game uh, that we're going to play against the Pacers, and it's going to be the last game we play of the 2020 season. But before we simulate up to that, there's a couple things I want to take a look at. Number one, I want to take a look here at the award races. So uh, first off, let's... Let's look at the most valuable player. So right off the bat, you see Giannis averaging 28.2, 11 and a half rebounds a game, six assists of steal and a half and a block and a half per game. I, I really don't see any scenario where he doesn't win this award here. Uh, Steph is definitely close, man. I mean, he's not getting the blocks, but I mean, he's really doing everything else. Uh, he's not averaging a double-double, uh, a very convincing double-double like Giannis is. Um, but, you know, he's, he's really probably carrying this team right now him and clay uh, then you got lebron Jokic, and anthony davis uh you know in in the mix as well but i think that uh this award is is for Giannis or steph to lose honestly rookie of the year right now Jarrett culver is in the lead for that but i really think that ja has an extremely strong case uh for that award honestly um you know 17 and a half per game 2.3 rebounds uh seven assists almost um so you know he's doing really really well and then over a steal and a half per game uh you know just having himself a hell of a season uh cam is scoring but he's not doing a whole lot else really um you know Jarrett culver with almost 20 a game five and a half rebounds three and a half assists um and over a steal and a block per game is is probably the one that's going to win out right now but i would love really love to see ja step up and uh, take that award away from Jarrett Culver. Sixth man of the year race as of right now, Larry Nance Jr. is uh, the front runner for that award, but you also got Serge Ibaka, Bam Adebayo, Whitehead, and Mason Plumley in the mix. Defensive player of the year, uh, the front runner for MVP as well, Giannis, Anthony Davis, Draymond Green, Kawhi Leonard, and Robert Covington. Most improved, Jeremy Lamb is uh, in the lead for that, 15 and a half per game. Uh, Bledsoe, I would think, would be a, a prime candidate for that award. He's averaging over 20 a game. Uh, Randall, kind of the same thing. So that's the award races. The one other thing I wanted to take a look at is some of the team stats. So the points per game leader as of right now is the Rockets. The Pacers are right behind them along with the Nets and the Celtics. Uh, all four teams averaging anywhere between 112 and 113 per game. Points allowed per game. It looks like the best team right now in the league is the Nets, and uh, hence why they have, I believe, the best record in the NBA right now. So uh, they're only at allowing 103.7 per game. Celtics right behind them, and the Knicks in the mix there as well. Best field goal percentage in the league. The only team with uh, above a 50% field goal percentage from the field the New Orleans Pelicans, so uh, really, really cool uh, honor for them. Uh, they're having a decent year, too, six games over 500. And then the Nets, who are, you know, seem to be right at the top of all of these team stats, are right there with them, along with the 76ers. Three-point field goals made per game. Look at this. We are third in the league in three-point field goals made per game. Now, that doesn't surprise me too much, because we have a lot of really great shooters on this team. Uh, but the Raptors in first with 14.2 made per game. 
the Hawks in second with 12 and a half, and we are right behind them along with the Bullets. So the two expansion teams doing really well in three-pointers made per game. Three-point percentage, of course, the Warriors average over 40% from three. Let's see where we are in this uh, in this category. All right, so we are closer to the bottom. We're like bottom third, uh, 21st, 35% uh, from three. So not too, too bad, um, but I think it's something we can build on. Free throw percentage, we are number one in the league by a mile. We average almost 85% on our free throws, and the only other team that's even close to us are the Mavericks and the Suns, the Cavs, and the Celtics. So, um, yeah, I mean, five teams averaging over 80% uh, from the free throw line. We are the only ones averaging near 85% from the stripe. So that is really, really cool in my opinion. All right, so we've made it through all of the interesting team stats, and uh, one of the things I also want to do after we've simulated a bit more and uh, in next episode is I want to go through each team and look at, you know, who the points leaders are on a points-per-game basis, rebounds, assists uh, on each team. We'll go through that in the next episode so we can kind of take our time a little bit with it. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and simulate through up to April 15th so that we can play this game against the Pacers. I'll simulate all the games and then we'll go back quickly and look through the stats from this seven game stretch. All right, so we've made it to April 15th to the Pacers game that we're gonna play. Let's go back and take a quick look at the games that we simulated through. The first one was against the Nets and uh, they beat us. Jaron Jackson with a decent game, Morant, our two top scorers as usual, and Keldon Johnson comfortably making his way into that third spot. Next up, we had a 31-point loss to Damian Lillard and the Trailblazers. It was Lillard and Harrell that, that uh, did us in on that one. Jaron Jackson and John Morant, once again, the leading scorers. Keldon Johnson right behind them. The Toronto Raptors. We beat the Raptors by 21 points. So a nice, convincing win against one of the better teams in the NBA right now. Keldon Johnson and Bryn Forbes led us in scoring. Jaron Jackson had himself a decent game. Siakam, Lowry, and Leonard were the leaders on Toronto's side. Next up, it was Brooklyn again, beating us by 50. Zubats, Morant, Jaron Jackson, the only players scoring double figures in this 72-point game. D'Angelo Russell and Jarrett Allen coming up big for the Brooklyn Nets. Next up, another win against the Clippers, a 16-point victory where Bryn Forbes and Jaron Jackson were our leading scorers. And look at this. A 13-point, 10-rebound, 15-assist, triple-double for John ja Moran. He also had a steal, a block, and only one turnover. What a game. A very efficient, awesome game there for John ja Morant with the triple-double. And yes, guys, that is his first career triple-double in the NBA as a member of the Louisville Badgers. He's got 12 double-doubles, but that's his first triple-double. So congrats to Ja on that one next up a 22 point loss to the trailblazers it was jackson and zubats and johnson stepping up in this one for us but lillard and mccullum that deadly duo was too much for us and then the last game before the pacers game was a win another win 13 point victory over the minnesota timberwolves again another one of the better teams in the league john morant Close to another triple-double here. 21 points, 6 boards, 10 assists, 2 steals, only 1 turnover. I'm really loving the fact that he's not turning the ball over much. And then look at this. Keldon Johnson is really, really starting to find his way in this offense. Towns' double-double with 24 points would prove to not be enough to beat us on this night. And so now that brings us up to the Pacers game. And what I want to do is I want to take a quick look before we play the game at the playoff picture. So let's take a look at the conference so the Brooklyn Nets at 55 and 25 looks like they're going to end up as the number one seed for this season. Milwaukee is right behind them, tied with Orlando at 51 and 30. Boston has clinched the playoff berth at 50 and 31, and then the Knicks have also clinched. It looks like the Cavs, Pacers, and Raptors are fighting for three other playoff spots, but the Sixers are the one team that could still sneak their way in. So it's not 100% certain that any one of these teams are going to make the playoffs. One of these four teams is going to have to get bumped. And the question is, which team is it going to be? It'd be really nice if we could beat the Pacers and then they could lose again in their following game, which would mean 
that they would probably end up with a lottery pick because they would miss the playoffs. So that would be clutch because we have their pick. However, if I had to guess, the odd team out in this bunch here is definitely the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're definitely the weakest team of these four. So my money is on the Pacers, Raptors, and Sixers making it into the playoffs, but we'll have to see how that plays out. And then over in the West, it's the Rockets who will end up with the number one seed. They were the only team in the West to win 50 games. The Los Angeles Lakers could still do it, uh, but as of right now, it's looking like the Rockets will be the only team to win 50 plus games. No teams winning 60 plus in this 2020 season, but the playoff picture shaped up like this. So the Rockets will get the number one seed at 55 and 26 as it stands. The Lakers at 48 and 32. The T-Wolves at 47 and 33, and the Nuggets, Warriors, Spurs, Suns, and Pelicans have all clinched a playoff berth, so it looks like Portland will be out. The only thing up in the air at this moment is who will have what seed in these playoffs. So in the next episode, we're not only going to play this Indiana Pacers game right here, but we're also going to dive a lot deeper into the scouting of the 2020 draft class and thinking a lot about who we're going to pick. And then, of course, lastly... We're also going to be revealing the last of the hashtag ad players in the next episode, so definitely stay tuned for that. The last of the 2020 draft class will be revealed in the next episode. Now, that does not mean that I'm not going to be creating them anymore. I'm still going to be revealing more hashtag ad players, plenty more for that matter, for the upcoming 2021 draft class that'll be not this offseason, but the following offseason. So stay tuned for that for sure. So I hope you guys come back to hang out with me as we put a beat down on the Pacers, hopefully, in the next episode. Until then, though, I'll see you guys next time.